I'm Gillian Lang, I'm Director of Experience Development at Glasgow Science Centre. So we've always wanted to uh, enhance the environment outside Glasgow Science Centre and bring more of the science engagement from inside the building to outside. So this was a great opportunity for us to do that but also to green the grey of the city and bring climate change mitigations to our site. We hope to improve the biodiversity and the wildlife in the area will improve the visual amenity of the space and make it a much nicer place for our visitors to come and passers-by. We want to create a platform for researchers to come down to Glasgow Science Centre and use the facility for their research to gather evidence so that we can provide a test bed and an exemplar for future climate change mitigations on the Clyde. So we have some great partners on this project and everyone is as enthusiastic about it as we are. So we worked with the Clyde Marine Planning Partnership and Nature Scott to make sure that everything that we are doing aligns with what their aspirations are. We also worked with Biomatrix who have been instrumental in designing and installing the floating gardens. Lastly but not leastly, we worked with the University of Glasgow. They have been important to us in terms of creating a baseline study to look at the ecology and the public perception of a, a project like this. Dr Ed Curley, I'm working at the University of Glasgow as a lecturer and a researcher in freshwater ecology and conservation. So we've already begun a baseline monitoring, um, so this is going out in a boat and assessing water quality and aspects of the soils, like the sediments in the basin, uh, where the floating wetlands are due to be installed. And in the future what we'll be looking at is looking at changes in biology, so looking at uh, how they potentially increase biodiversity and also changes again in water quality and any sediment dynamics as well. This is a very exciting um, project for the Science Centre to be involved in. We're bringing science engagement outside and making it more relevant to our environment and to our passers-by, to our neighbours. We already have grassland, woodland and freshwater wetlands on our site, so this will bring an estuarine habitat as well, so it allows us to really talk about a lot of different nature-based solutions with our visitors, which is a very exciting prospect for us. And it's really important that we, as a community, are attached to and aware of natural processes and systems. And also, in terms of bringing in greater biodiversity to, win, to within urban developments as well, it's crucial that we do that going forward to provide resilience towards climate change. My name is Marlene McCrory and I belong to Glasgow Disability Alliance. My grandfather worked uh, with Browns in the shipyards and my dad worked with various companies. So I have a lot of contact, uh, connections with the shipyards and the, the Clyde, uh, so I just had to come. We did a little art project while I was here and I, I uh, drew a ladybird. It's the first time I've picked up a pencil in years and years, so I was quite pleased with it that it actually looks like a ladybird. <laughs> so community engagement is at the heart of what we do at the Glasgow Science Centre. We're very interested in hearing the views of our local neighbourhoods and our community groups. We've had over a hundred participants in this particular project and they've been involved in workshops about biodiversity and the environment. They've also provided uh, artwork that we've used on our interpretation boards and they are developing content that we'll use on the website. I think the thing that excites me the most about the wetlands coming to the Clyde would be just regeneration of the Clyde. It's something for people to come and see. My dad would be absolutely thrilled because he was a gardener, so the fact that there are going to be plants, uh, it's just, I've been thinking about them a lot today since uh, I've been here. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to coming back and seeing all the, the floating gardens. It would be fabulous. I'm Galen Fulford and I'm the Managing Director at Biomatrix. Biomatrix is a ecosystem technology company and we build the substrates to allow wetland ecosystems to become established in areas where they wouldn't otherwise be able to thrive. The islands are made of a recycled HDPE, which is basically water pipes that are recycled when they're upgrading pipelines. Those are held together with stainless steel connecting brackets and then the whole system is then infilled with a planting substrate that biomimics the natural materials that you would find in a riparian shoreline like the estuary and edges of the Clyde say 700 years ago or before any of this edge was built. Every ecosystem that we create is a unique shape and a unique design to 
harmonize with the surrounding architecture and geometry of the place and also to provide different types of ecosystem features. For example, we've got tree planters on here and we also have a nice open pool in the middle where things like grebes can swim underneath and pop up in the middle and the kind of shape and the series of little archipelago of islands is quite unique for this location. The benefits of islands like this, they really bring in all of the ecosystem services that you would have with a natural wetland habitat and also some more because you have all the roots going down in the water. All of the plants are taking their nutrients from the water, so we're not introducing any nutrients at all. The materials that we're putting on are very inert and so we'll be taking out nitrogen and phosphorus so some of the things that are coming down the Clyde will be taken up by the plants as well. More broadly what we're looking at is potentially the implementation of these floating wetlands um, across the Clyde if that's possible um, and also looking at the wider benefits uh, to Glasgow as a whole. There's fantastic evidence you know some projects focused on water quality have good data in that regard others are really focused on net biodiversity gain looking at the species here in Kenting Basin there's no wetland habitat here at all so as soon as we put in plants and we're putting in thousands of plants right now um, that will have a huge increase in the in the local biodiversity of this particular area. I think it's really important that we all work together, um, the community and the Science Centre. I mean, the Science Centre actually belongs to the community, so we should be part of the regeneration of the Clyde. Everybody has to work together to, to help the planet, really. I really enjoy like people engaging with the environment and with wildlife as well, and it's a really nice opportunity to bring that to this area. We're kind of in an era of renaturalization of the urban environment, uh, which I find really exciting. I am so excited about this new addition. We've been wanting to do this for a long time. I love to see how things grow and evolve and the science that's right in front of our faces. We're all scientists, science is everywhere, and I'm really looking forward to watching it grow and evolve and change through the seasons and doing that together with our visitors.